I knew before the fight began, if I was going to win or lose, I knew that in the dressing room because I would look in the mirror and if I saw Sugar Ray Leonard, I could beat Mike Tyson. If I saw Ray Leonard, then it's going to be a rough night. Aldous Adamas for the gold medal. Uh, Aldous Adamas, my opposition, had just annihilated everyone. He sent people, sent fighters uh, to the hospital, I mean, on stretchers. The general consensus felt that I was, I shouldn't have been no contest to Aldous Adamas. i tell you one thing, I remember that night, night before the fight, I didn't get much sleep, but I, I thought about that fight and I co kind of choreographed it in my head, how I should win, how I can win and it all came, it all happened. That year, 1976 in Montreal, was a time in my career that I'll never forget. It wasn't about uh, being famous or making money, it was about representing myself and my country. I was fighting for the most valuable prize in the world, and that is the Olympic gold medal. Nothing compares to that. You know, someone can say I, I was world champion professionally, uh, I was this, I was that, but being an Olympic gold medalist, that speaks volume. Dick Eckler. Very unorthodox, very confident, very uh, kind of crazy guy who later became my friend. He didn't care who I was because at that time I, was, I won all my fights. He wasn't that easy to, to beat. I think there is a uh, uh, question about did he knock me down? I slipped. I actually slipped. Down. Let's see if that's a knockdown. And Eklund just walked over it. It wasn't the fact that physically he was tough. He was just tough mentally. He never gave up. As Eklund down again. Eklund is down. He tried the best he could, but it was more so experience over yeah. talent. But he's a, he's a tough son. He was a tough son of a bitch. Pete Ranzani. If you look at him, he doesn't look that... Uh, he doesn't look that fearful. He was kind of a skinny, well, he was skinny, very, very skinny guy, but he was, you know, he used everything to his fullest. I mean, his height advantage, his speed, his style. Actually, I, I beat him in the uh, amateurs, so I knew of him. I knew about him. It was a good fight. I learned from that. I learned from every fight, but I learned from that fight, too. To throw punches until the guy's down. Continue to throw punches until the guy's down. And never take anyone for granted. Wilfred Benitez. Competing against Wilfred Benitez, who was the, the youngest champion ever, 17 years old, world champion. He was one of my most difficult fights, along with the championship being on the line. I never missed so many punches, so many punches in my life. I threw punches left and right. I had pretty fast hands. And uh, out of maybe 12 punches, maybe, maybe three will land. Leonard going right at Benitez here in round one. Whipping right hand. Messing with most. He was so elusive. He was never a stationary target. He had that that natural God blessed talent that he could feel a punch and slip it. That fight was so tough that I went to the hospital late that night because of dehydration. Because I I beat him. I beat Benitez with talent, yes, but more so with my heart. I never gave up. I never stopped throwing punches. Leonard steps in with a laugh. And he stops it! Carlos Padilla stops it with six seconds to go! 1976, gold medalist Sugar Ray Leonard, the new WBC World Welterweight Champion. Even when I'm exhausted, if I get you hurt, I could come on strong like it was just the first round. We're stronger than we really are, but you have to really dig deep. And it hurts. It does hurt. But to win is what it's all about. To win. Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran, uh... That's a bitch. Um, I love him now. We're friends. Yeah, my very first loss. My very first loss. Duran taught me or showed me or displayed to me how important the mind is. And he said things about me. He cursed me out. He cursed my wife out. It worked because he got under my skin. He got into my head. I said, you know what? I'm going to beat this guy in his own game. And that was when the problem started because I wanted to beat him at his own game, which is just standing toe-to-toe -to -toe and, and just banging away, as opposed to using the ring, using my hand speed, using my height. But I wanted to get at this guy because he disrespected me. He's trading, trading punch for punch with Durant. Around the third or fourth round, he hit me, and 
he he rocked me. I mean, he, he, he almost knocked me down. They called Roberto Duran the hands of stone, Mono State Pietras. And he hit me, and I, I, I even turned around and said, who else was in this damn ring? His power was un, unimaginable. He was perpetual motion. After the fight, which I lost in 15 rounds, went to my hotel and a doctor came by and drew blood from my ear because you break the blood vessels in your ears, your ears become cauliflower. That kind of pain was even worse than the punches. I was gonna retire, I thought about retiring because I said, I can't deal with this anymore. But the fighter in me said, you know, after a few days of rest, I said, I want to rematch as soon as possible. And I made that happen. Roberto Duran too. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about that fight. And this time I, I was going to box him, outpoint him, use my hand speed, use the ring. Duran is watching a different Leonard in the first minute. Good right, right hand by Leonard. He said he'd be aggressive this time. And boy, is he good right hand. Left and right, but here comes Good right hand by Leonard. So they really the fighting. Fight. Looking back on my first fight, there were so many distractions to me. The guys were coming to me at the training camp. Can I get the car wreck? Can I, can I get this? Can I get that? I was there to train. But I ended up, it was like a vacation for some of my friends and relatives. The second fight, I trained hard. I stayed focused. I stayed in the zone. That made the, the, a huge difference in the outcome of the fight. Duran is not as aggressive as he was in the first fight because I was using my footwork and my hand speed. And you'll notice he was almost like puzzled. There was a, like a, a question mark on his face. Like, what, what's going on here? What, what is he doing? And humiliation, because I, I kind of stuck my chin out a little bit and did a little bit of this pow. Yeah, it, it works. Doing a little dodgy now and a little Ali. He's taunting Durant. Look at that. I learned to get inside his head as opposed to him getting set back inside my head. And also the public or the fans were laughing because I was doing the bolo punch and sticking my chin out because it was like a bully. He was like a bully. And a bully would do one or two things if challenged. He would punch you out or he would run away. And Duran ran away. I love you, Roberto. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my take. Sugar Ray in the ropes, it gets away immediately. And what's happening? Duran says no. I think he's quitting. What is he saying, Larry? He says no. I don't understand. He's saying no, no. He quit. I don't understand this. That was a you know, bizarre fight, bizarre ending. And people still talk about it, naturally. Uh, but it uh, was one of my favorite fights. Tommy Hearns. My fight against Tommy Hearns, uh, my God, that, that was one of the most significant fights of my entire career. I was the WBC champion, and Tommy Hearns was a WBA champion. And back then, there was only two or three boxing bodies. Tommy Hearns, again, he was one of those guys who, like Roberto Durant or Aldo Sadamas, annihilated his opponent. Just knocked him cold. And they thought when we met that Tommy would beat me because Tommy, you know, Tommy stands 6'2", arms longer than a football field, knockout power in both hands. Tommy had a heart of a, of a gladiator, a warrior. I think I would say majority of everyone figured that I had no chance against Tommy. I tell you what, it was one of my toughest fights, if not the toughest fight in opposition that I faced. When the first bell rung, I was trying to get inside. I couldn't get him because his arms were so quick. His reach was so incredible. And he closed my left eye so I could barely see. It was over 100 degrees in the ring. It was so hot. I finally hurt Tommy in the fourth, fifth round, I believe it was. There's the right hand. There's a, a hook. You don't know what it's like to be in the ring against someone so great as a Tommy Hearns. It wasn't until Muhammad Ali told me many years ago, he said, Ray, when I fought Joe Frazier, it was the closest thing to death. And I didn't quite understand that. I couldn't, I couldn't digest that. The fight with Tommy Hearns, it was the closest thing to death because you're exhausted. You can't keep your hands up. You know this guy, if you give him a chance, would we'll knock your block off. It wasn't until my, my trainer, uh, Angelo Dundee, said, Ray, I think 11th or 12th round, he said, you're blowing it, you're blowing it, meaning I'm losing. You're blowing it now, son, you're blowing it. That little pep talk, that little sound bite made a huge difference in the outcome of that fight. Because I got off the stool the next round, and I heard him, and I rocked him, and I took him out. Leonard has to fight a desperate fight. Good right hand, that we oh, was hurt again. He has nothing left. He's going to be knocked out. And 
I received his belt. It was kind of a unification fight. Oh yeah, because I retired in 82. Yes, you're right. You're all right, actually. I retired a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was 25, 26, you know, and people told me, you know, how happy I should be that I had the title, I'm famous, but it wasn't about that anymore. It wasn't, it wasn't about that. It was, it's about, it was about my legacy. And you don't tell people you're the best. You let them tell you that they think you're the best by fighting the best guys out there. Kevin Howard. Kevin Howard, the first time I was knocked down, wasn't hurt at all, at all, because sometimes we get knocked down, and it's what they call a flash flood knockdown, which means you hit on the chin, and you go down. Everything just crumbles, and there's no pain or anything. I really believe that Sugar Ray Leonard right now thinks he can take him at any time, and a right hand from Kevin Howard put Sugar Ray Leonard right on the seat of his pants. But there are times you get knocked down, and all of a sudden when your legs uh, become invited, that's when your mind said, okay, man, now we, we're not stable, so the guy's going to knock us out. It wasn't the case with Kevin Howard. I was, I was more embarrassed than anything. And there was the left hand, and Kevin Howard is about done here. Stop, stop, stop. At the press conference, I said, guys, you know what? M my mind and my body told me that it's, you know, it's over, and I'm, I retire for good. But then I came back because I, I saw who I felt was one of the greatest middleweight champions of all time, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. I went to see his fight. Hagler was fighting this guy named John the Beast Mugabe, and it was a pretty even fight in the early stages until Hagler came on strong, as he normally does, and destroys. And I just felt that I could beat him. I just felt, observing him, that I had the tools, if sharpened, to beat him. When I announced that I, wanted, that, that I was fighting him, the whole boxing circle went crazy because they, my last fight, I was knocked down by Kevin Howard. So people were concerned about my health, especially my eye. I had a de partial detached retina. Majority, I would say 98% felt that I had no chance. Rightfully so, because I haven't been active for quite some time, for years. Marvin Hacker. It was five days before the fight. I'm boxing. My sparring partner hit me, nearly knocked me out. My people, my guys, my team, on the ride back to my hotel, were silent. No one said a word because they, they felt that if I get hurt by a sparring partner, Hagler was going to kill me. And I got so upset that I called my trainer. I said, Mike, they think I'm going to lose. I said, Hagler will not touch me because my, my original fight plan was to stand toe to toe. I boxed him and I did what I did. Leonard, the first punch of the fight. Leonard, a combination again. It was that punch, thank God it was because of that punch that I changed my style, the style that I thought was going to beat Hagler. And you, no one stands toe to toe with Hagler. No one. Combination, Leonard got the better of that. Hagler peppering him. Leonard now tries to fight off the rope. The crowd chanting Sugar Ray. And new, Hagler was a beast in the ring. He was one of the guys who was in the best shape 100% of the times. Donnie Lalonde made an incredible comeback against Donnie Lalonde because there was a vacant super middleweight, 168 title that was on the line. He was a good fighter, good champion. And I remember getting hit by him, and he hurt me so bad. I mean, the first punch, the first jab rocked me. See that Leonard does not want to get close. That's when I, I felt in my heart, and that was the only time, only other time I should say, because Duran one was, was vicious, that I, I said, man, I don't need it. I, want, I, I wanted to quit in that ring. A part of me said I wanted to give it up. But then again, the real me said, no, we're going to see this thing through. When he knocked me down, I think it was like on the fourth, fifth round two, I was knocked, he just, just hit me. If you get hit or side swipe on the side of your temple, your equilibrium is just out of whack. You can't, you can't stabilize yourself. And you just go down. You're not hurt. Well, I wasn't hurt. And I knew, I looked in his face, and the expression was, I'm going to get you this, the next round, or, at, or I'm going to finish you before this round is up. And he came out when the referee called us together, and he tried to take me out. And he threw a lot of punches that were not necessary or that missed. 
I would come back and I throw a body shot. And it was a body shot that kind of stunned him. I can show you. I can. I can show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll get my Tommy Hearns too. That fight, sh there should have been a rematch way, years, years before. People all felt the general consensus felt the fight shouldn't even take place because they called Tommy Hearns a shot fighter, and they felt that I would just, I'd just pound him out. But Tommy is a proud man, fighter, and I knew that he would be the different fighter when he fought me, trying to get me back. So by, by me having this, everyone telling me how, how easy it's going to be, it kind of made me not fear Tommy. You have to fear every man in the ring. And I got in that ring, I looked at Tommy, and he had that, the eye of the tiger, which I didn't have. And he, it became a tougher fight than expected. Tommy hit me and hurt me more times than the first fight. Well, he may be aiming for a big right hand. Right to the jaw of Leonard. Leonard took it, but it was a big shot. from her. Leonard looks hurt, gets up, but he is hurting. I just think that what took place in that ring was that I was more civilized. I was living the life of a star, and uh, you can't have that. You, you can't have that voice in your head telling you, hey, let's, when are we going home? When are we going to the party? Leonard didn't move him, but it was a tough <laughs> Dropped his right hand. Tommy dropped his right hand. Away. Watch the clock now, Tim. Tommy has nothing left. Right hand by her. Leonard and Hearns in difficulty along the ropes. Another combination. The crowd is on its feet. What a war. What a fight. I'd have to score it for Tommy Hearns. I would agree. We've got Hearns the winner, but we'll see how the officials see it. And it ended in the draw. I felt felt bad. I felt with that draw against Tommy Hearns, I, I felt I lost the fight. I really felt that. Who knows, man? But Tommy, I, I personally feel now, even now, looking, even watch the tape now, Tommy won that fight. But I give him a point or two. Hector Camacho. One of the worst mistakes I've made in my life. You know, I, I felt, I actually felt that I could beat Hector Camacho, who was an incredible champion fighter. I don't know. I, 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 I guess I was trying to save myself. That was a, kind of a bad area, bad timing for me. But the minute he hit me, the first punch, pow, was a jab, pow. And I said to myself, you know what, maybe, I wonder if they care if we postpone this for a little bit. First time in six years, I mean, he's been sparring hundreds of rounds. Oh, and moving last, a real quick. John Saracino, watch it. Oh, good shot there by Leonard. Leonard is down. Come on, they're landing, push has to stop it, now it's time. There it is. There he is. Great champion, two real gentlemen. My body said, you know, my body said, hey, come on, man, like, give, me, give me a break. I face some of the toughest oppositions in the world. My health is still great. I have great kids, great family, friends. I'm done. Let me reciprocate. Let me give back to uh, the world, if you will. That's when I started my foundation with my wife for knocking out diabetes, type 1, type 2. I've been knocked down, but not out. Even to this day, I, I live my life like a fighter outside the ring. Don't believe people who tell you you can't be this or be that and give back, you know, because I won those fights. And although it's a mano a mano, it's me against you, but I won that fight because I had a team, I had a corner. So always, you know, give props to your, your friends and your, your corner and don't ever give up. <laughs>